Hello Muggles and welcome back to another episode of my Harry Potter kitchen. If you missed last week's recipe where we made these Harry Potter inspired Chelsea buns, check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it's another Magic Monday, which means we've got another exciting recipe for you. As part of my Harry Potter kitchen, I am creating a recipe for every food and drink item mentioned in the series. So if you love the books or the films and you don't wanna miss a thing, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you'll get an alert every time I upload a new video. Okay, so before we continue with the story, let's just recap what happened last week. Mr. Dursley just set off for work, notes a few weird things along the way with a tabby cat, some owls flying ahead. Then he thought, it's lunchtime, gonna head to the bakery, get myself a bun. See what happens next. Okay, he's gone to the bakery. He's noticed some more weird people and in two sentences time, we've got our next recipe. So there's lots of whispering, excitingly too, but he couldn't see a single collection tin. It was on his way back past them, clutching a large donut in a bag that he caught a few words of what they were saying. So there we have it. Let's go make some donuts. For this recipe, you will need one sachet of yeast, 30 milliliters of warm water, 175 millilitres of milk, 50 grams of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one egg, 50 grams of shortening, 300 grams of flour, and 750 grams of shortening to fry. You'll also need 160 grams of icing sugar, 30 millilitres of milk, and 30 millilitres of liquid glucose for your glaze. Now I think it's safe to say that Krispy Kremes are the ultimate donut, but they're not quite magical enough for my Harry Potter kitchen. So instead, I'm gonna create one giant Krispy Kreme that hopefully tastes like the real thing. To begin, you'll want to mix your yeast and your warm water in a small bowl, stirring it really well, and then leave it for 10 minutes until some bubbles start to form. In a separate bowl, crumble together your shortening into your flour, and then add in your sugar and salt. Make a well in the middle of your dry ingredients and then pour in your milk, your egg, and your yeast mixture. Now for this recipe to get that melt in your mouth crispy cream texture, we are gonna make a really soft dough. So I would recommend that you use a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment. If you do have to do it by hand because you don't have one, then recommend greasing and oiling your hands or using a dough scraper to do a lot of the hard work for you. You want to knead this for about five to 10 minutes until it is smooth, but it's gonna be very, very soft to the touch. Once your dough is ready, you want to place it into a well-greased bowl, cover it with cling film, and then pop it into a warm area to rise for at least an hour. Once your dough has doubled in size, you want to knock back the air slightly before rolling it out. Be quite gentle with this, and we want to get it to about two centimetres high, so you don't have to roll it out too much. Try to keep it in as much of a circular pattern as you can, and then we're going to use a bowl to cut out our donut shape. Next, you need to take a cookie cutter and cut out the center of your donut before placing it back onto a greased and floured baking tray and leave it to rise for about half an hour. About five to 10 minutes before your donut is ready, you want to start heating your oil. So get a pan that is big enough to look after your donut and pop your shortening in on a medium heat. Now do make sure that you have a pan that is big enough and deep enough to fry your donut in. When I first tried to make this, I did it in one that was a little bit too small and might have had some kitchen drama. So don't make my mistake, as big as a pan you can get is best. You can test your oil is ready by putting some excess dough into it. It should start bubbling straight away and then turn golden brown in about one minute's time. When you're happy, slowly lower your giant donuts into the oil. Try to avoid getting any splashback on you because the oil is gonna be extremely hot and then let it fry for about one to two minutes on each side. Now, what I did discover when I was making my test donut is that it's so big, it is quite difficult to flip. So what I found easy to do was let it fry on one side until it's nice and solid, then take it out of the pan, flip it over onto a baking tray, and then pop it back in. This way you can control the splashback as much as possible. Once your donut is nice and fried on the other side and it should be a good golden brown, take it out of the pan and let it dry on some kitchen towel to soak up any excess grease. While your donut is still warm, you can start making your glaze by sifting some icing sugar into a bowl and adding in your milk and your liquid glucose. Whisk it together until it's nice and smooth and then drizzle it over the bottom of your donut. 
Leave that to set slightly and then flip it over and give it the final glaze on the good side. This is a nice way you can hide any defects that you might have had while frying it. And we're finished. Our giant Krispy Kreme donut is ready to eat and it's best served warm. So there we have it, our giant Krispy Kreme donut is complete. I hope you enjoy this recipe. I was so surprised at how realistic they taste, so definitely give it a go and let me know what you think. That is all for this recipe. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more from the My Harry Potter Kitchen series, then make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get an alert every time I upload a new video. And I'll see you there.